Hello and welcome to episode five of Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden. On this issue of Word Search, we'll be exploring what the program is all about and looking previously on what's happened in our series, considering what it is to be a member, a minister, a messenger, and a missionary based on the fascinating events found in Acts chapter three and four. In this particular episode, we'll be covering the first part of Acts chapter four, looking at arrests and convictions. More on that later on when we explore the content, the concepts and the conclusions in that first part of Acts four. And then at the end of our session, as ever, there will be prayer points for us to consider going forward. So what's Word Search? Word Search is primarily a place to search God's word. And it's also a time for God's word to search us. Search us to encourage godly development in our character so that we can be stimulated to pursue that priority of the kingdom of God and his righteousness. As we allow God's word to search us, it's with the hope that it will inform and transform both our prayers and our practices for his name's sake. It's all done with the knowledge that word search is to find treasure in God's word that will enable us not just to be hearers of his word, but doers also. Previously then on word search, we're covering a particular series exploring what it is to be in form. In form is to consider carefully convictions that I have when I look at the word, that when we consider who we are in the word, to be in form is recognizing that we are members, ministers, messengers, and missionaries. What does that mean? We are members of the body of Christ and we're members of the family of God. That's who we are. We're also ministers of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means we're servants. He tells us what to do and we serve him in obeying him. We're also messengers because part of the service that we offer to others in particular is to share with them the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And while we're sharing that good news, it's not just in word, but we're also demonstrating as missionaries of the kingdom of God, what the rule of God looks like in everyday life. You know, it's good to know what you've let yourself in for when you've repented and believed and been baptized and received the Holy Spirit so that like an athlete or a soldier, we can stay fit by recognizing what it is to be in form. And so after an initial summary of what this series is looking at, last time on Word Search, we were considering the second part of Peter's message found in Acts chapter 3. In particular, we were looking at the second element seen in verses 17 to 26, where we were considering how Peter's message connected with his audience because he knew he was talking to and he knew that they would engage with what he was talking about. And we also considered how his message involved both hope and judgment, how there was mercy with expectations and how that message covered aspects of the past, the present and the future. And how crucial it was that that message connected the listener to God and it demanded a response of some sort, which we'll be exploring in a bit more detail in today's episode. One of the big outcomes from the time exploring that particular part of the word was the understanding that God sends us on a message, on a mess, he sends us on a mission, even with a message. And the purpose of delivering the message is something that we should have in our minds at all times, especially because the message that we have to offer to others really has an appeal in it for people to change, even as it has implicit within it a challenge to the sin that um, some of us have taken to be the norm for so long. And that's why we need to trust God for the right way to get the message across. You can find more about that episode when you click the link above as you look at it, or just go and look in the channel that you found this particular episode on and look at the previous episodes. Feel free to listen and watch those to catch up with where we've got to so far to get a lot more of the meat of what's going on in this series. 
So today what we're considering in particular is what's going on in Acts chapter 4 verses 1 to 4 uh, about arrests and holy convictions. Arrests and holy convictions as found in Acts chapter 4 verses 1 to 4. Now Acts chapter 4 verses 1 to 4 says as follows. And as they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed. And the number of the men came to about 5,000. May God give us a blessing as we read and as we hear his word being read. Um, there's just so much that we can consider just by listening and engaging with the word that has been written for us to grow by. So I pray that there's a blessing in that, even in the hearing of it as it's read. Now, before I consider some of the concepts that's going on in this small section of scripture, this small section of the episode, I'm fascinated by some of the content that we discover here in this short reading. So the first thing that I'm fascinated to see is the response of the religious authority. So as we discovered last week, and as you discover, if you read the previous part of Acts chapter three, Peter's just finished. Uh, exercising his opportunity to share the good news and as, as we'll discover uh, that has caused a particular reaction from the religious authorities and one of the aspects of the reactions that I like to read about is how they were greatly annoyed there is something so intriguing about when you uh, speak a particular word and it has a um connection to people in authority as Peter wasn't uh, wasn't reluctant to express boldly that uh, the Jesus that has caused this paralyzed man to be made well uh, is the same Jesus that the people and the authorities had killed who has come back from the dead thanks to the power of the God that all of the people claimed to follow so, that, so you can understand why that would have been a great annoyance to the religious rulers. Fascinating stuff. I, I just find that so intriguing. So why they're annoyed is because of that central issue about the resurrection from the dead. Death, fine. He can be dead. No problem with that. But for him to be risen from the dead and then for his name to have this authority, clearly that would cause a problem for those who have a status quo uh, that would prefer to ignore him or deny him or dismiss him or anything of that nature. I found reading that fascinating. And I want you to consider, as you read that yourself, can you imagine why people would reject the word today? Um, context is completely different in the sense that uh, there aren't the religious rules that there were at that time when you go about sharing the word. But there is something of a power struggle going on, isn't there? There is something about the power of the message of the gospel that shakes the uh, ruling powers of today because it really does say that there's a need for people to repent. So when the rulers of the day are upset by what's going on, then they have to exercise their authority. And their authority in this case is to shut that noise. And the best way to shut that noise is to lock the men up uh, until they can get a proper hearing in the next day. Uh, and so people think that they can stop the gospel by at least looking to silence those who are proclaiming the gospel. Uh, something worth bearing in mind, not just then, but now. Of course, it's a bit late though, because as they say, the horse has already bolted. It's a bit difficult to shut the gate after the horse has bolted, because the word has already gone out. And that's why I give God thanks for the opportunities that he will present to certain people to at least get the word out, so that as seen here, we cannot just have the negative response of those rulers and those in authority who are intimidated by this and want to shut the noise down. But there are people who will hear and whose lives will be changed by this glorious news 
that this Jesus who died rose from the dead and has the power to heal, restore, and deliver. Great news. It's brilliant news. And then there's also not just the fact that they hear, but we get that response that people believe. And yep, it's worth noting the numbers of people that were added to uh, the collection of believers to the collection of the community of faith but it's just a delight to know that when the word goes out those ears to hear will hear and respond in faith so what we see in the content of this alone is the two reactions that we can expect to get when the message is proclaimed in fact let's go into that a bit further when we consider some of the concepts that are going on underneath the scripture so the first as i've mentioned is that the message will cause a response of one or the other there will actually either be acceptance or rejection and you'll notice as well how the message can irritate guardians of the status quo what do you mean by that christopher i mean by that the message of the kingdom of god challenges people to change change from the way that they were to the way that god is creating them to be however there are some forces that would prefer people to stay exactly as they are change would disrupt their status quo that cannot happen and in the same way that um, the word of god was rejected in uh but well the word of god was rejected and the guardians of the status quo in that day whether it was the guards or the sadducees or the other religious authorities they tried to squash it that's not the first time that people have tried to squash the word of god being expressed in fact as stephen would outline in his proclamation to the religious authorities in Acts 7 there were many occasions where in history god would send men to faithfully communicate his word and the response to that was that those in authority sought to crush them and to stop them and to malign their name, give them a bad name, in essence. So it should be no surprise that the message that we deliver irritates those who would prefer the status quo to be as it is. And notice the real irritant in the message, in this case, is how it centers on Jesus. In particular, it sentence centers on the resurrection of Jesus, but the focus is all about Jesus. Fascinating stuff, especially as we'll see who Jesus is, as Peter will proclaim to the authorities, but that's for our next episode. Now, the purpose of the message is to give the opportunity for acceptance by faith. So it's not about, as we mentioned in a previous episode it's not really about giving people a guilty conscience it's about encouraging people to accept this news by faith to turn from their ways and to believe and that's why this particular message is so encouraged encouraging even this particular scripture is so encouraging because we see that in as much as those two men might have had their uh, freedoms taken away they were taken as they did the word of god and as they serve the word of God in humility and in diligence, and as a result of that, the response of hearing people turn to faith uh, is a remarkable one that deserves great celebration. And then there's also the aspect of the fact that when the ministers of God share the message of God as part of the mission of the kingdom of God, we get to welcome new members into the family of God. It's something to anticipate. Which leads us into certain conclusions that I want us to take from this reading, however brief it was about arrests and convictions, that there's the arrest of the people, but as in the two men, Peter and John, there's their arrest, but there's the conviction of the people to change, which should lead us to some key conclusions to take from our reading. One is to remind ourselves that God sends us on a mission with a message for people to change and as we deliver that message we should do so with an expectation one expectation as we've seen is that we should expect in certain cases rejection i mean if you know that you could be rejected and you have that expectation at least it won't come as a surprise to you or as a shock to you 
It might come as a disappointment and it might be sad, but these accounts are put in there so that we can see clearly rejection is par for the course. It's not just about 100% acceptance all the time. And that rejection can express itself in hostility as is seen by the rulers and in those who are guardians of the status quo, but it can also be expressed in an apathy uh, to the message. Either way can be an expression of rejecting the message, but it's something that we should expect. But as well as expecting the rejection, there should be something in us as well that is expecting acceptance, that people, however many, will hear the message and will receive the message and will turn to the author of that message in faith, believing that in Jesus, not only can they be saved, but they too can become members of the family of God, employed as ministers of the Lord Jesus Christ to share this message as part of the mission of seeing the kingdom established. So we should expect rejection and expect acceptance. And in doing all of that, we're doing all of that trusting God to do what's right as we faithfully obey him in getting the message across. The expectations that we have are expectations that we should have of God so that our trust is in God for the results. It's not about what we manipulate, what we maneuver, what we control. It's all about being faithful and obedient to God and trusting him with the results, whatever the reaction is to the message that we share. In the light of that, then here are some prayer points that I want us to consider carefully. First of all, I want us to seek God for opportunities to share the message. Secondly, I want us to thank God for those who will accept the message as it's been shared. As ever, I want us to prepare for rejection and hostility as we share the message. And in the light of that, let's pray that we will be faithful to the call that we've been given to share that message and celebrate the new members that will be added as a result of the good news being declared. For how can they believe unless someone has been sent to share the good news? That's why the feet of those who share the good news are called blessed. And so I pray that you will be blessed as you pray on these issues and as you seek those opportunities, as you thank God for those who accept, prepare for the rejection and hostility, and endeavor to remain faithful to share the message wherever the opportunity arises and presents itself in preparation and anticipation of celebrating new members of the family of God. So that's been Word Search for this week. Next time, on Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden. What we'll be moving on to is to explore a fascinating encounter of the rulers versus Peter and John. We'll be considering that carefully in episode six of our series, considering the members, the messengers, the ministers, and the missionaries of the glorious kingdom of God. So in the meantime, please remember to like, this particular video and share it with your friends and enemies. Please share it as far as broad as you can so that others can be encouraged by this good word and subscribe to the channel uh, and so that you can get notifications as you turn that notification bell on uh, for further episodes of Word Search. And wherever possible, if you feel led, please support the channel and the activities on the channel on the email address in the description below. And more important than anything else, as you are hearing the word, please endeavor to apply what you've heard. Uh, and in the meantime, thanks as ever for your time in listening to me speak as the Spirit of God leads me to speak here on Word Search, knowing that here at Word Search, it's just about finding treasure in God's word so that we can be hearers and doers of that word. And may God continue to bless you richly as you endeavor to do that which God is calling you to do as a member, a minister, a messenger, and a missionary of the glorious kingdom of God for his name's sake. Thanks for listening. Shalom.